Well, welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, it's exciting to be here this week to be able to address your fundraising questions. It's always a pleasure when I have questions from a, a listener or a viewer and we have responses to any of your questions that you may have regarding fundraising development, nonprofit management, all those kinds of questions have come into our different sources. So we are excited to do that. If you like what you see today, please subscribe to this channel. We are trying to grow this channel and get the message out. The more subscribers, the more the message gets out to people and the more people involved, the more we can share our wealth. So what an exciting opportunity we each have and I would love to have you as a subscriber to this channel. Well, let's dive right in and respond to our question for the week. Our question for the week is from Amber in Gernsville, California. And Amber asks, is it okay for two or more family members to serve on a board together? Well, Amber, thank you so much for that question. And I appreciate that a lot. Well, I would say that, first of all, uh, there normally isn't uh, a requirement unless it's specifically outlined in your bylaws that two or more members cannot serve together. But to be honest, in going through just my experiences over the years, I've found that having family members, a husband and wife, which is the typical uh, board presence, or having um, having a two brothers, two sisters, a brother and a sister, those seem to be the most frequent uh, um, family situations that happen on a board. And my experience is that it's become very problematic because what ends up happening is that generally family members, especially husbands and wives, uh, tend to feel the same way about an issue. Now, that doesn't always happen and there are times when family members have opposing views on issues. But in most cases, family members will discuss issues uh, about their board at home. They'll discuss them before getting to the meeting so that when they get there, they become a very formidable coalition uh, of, voting, of voters. And if you've only got a board of four individuals and two of those votes are of one family, that can really sway an opinion. Uh, in a board. Uh, but even if it's two with six or eight board members, having that block and typically uh, those individuals have already processed the position by themselves, either separately from the board meeting or maybe even on the way to the board meeting, they uh, that gives them a real advantage and they tend to utilize that advantage. And I've had some real um, very difficult situations over the years where two board members, uh, husband and wife, have bullied other board members. I've had situations where board members have um, taken such a strong stance, it's caused other board members to leave. Um, I would truly be very cautious about having family members on the same board together. Uh, as I said, they do get a distinct advantage that others might not have. When you have individuals on your board, um, and each is an individual voting member of your board, each processes that individually. And they come together, and the idea is that collectively, your board will agree together on decisions. And I can tell you over the years, some of the best boards I've been on, uh, I served on a board in Virginia and in Fairfax, Virginia, and it was one of the best, most unifying experiences I've ever seen when a, a, I would say that easily um, 98 to 99% of all the decisions in the eight years I served on that board, we were unanimous in our decisions, which is not easy to say when you've got a board of six or eight individuals. And of course, it gets tougher when you've got bigger boards of 10 or 12. But to have that many unanimous decisions, 
And that meant that in those decisions, we really processed together. Uh, there was give and take, there was humility, there was humbleness. Uh, individuals who had strong positions uh, processed through, thought through those. Some even shifted their position. Uh, some who did have strong positions had strong but not overbearing positions and they were able to communicate their position to others and get others to switch their positions. Uh, it was a very, very unifying experience. And those are some good things that can happen. Now, I'm not saying at all that you can't have family members who don't come in with a unifying position. Uh, I have had some situations where husbands and wives have served together and it has been very unifying and they did have unique, distinct opinions. But I've just seen too many times that you run the risk when you've got family members, especially husbands and wives, who are very strong and very opinionated, will gang together and will force some decisions to be made, force issues to be brought up on the table, uh, force decisions that maybe should not have been made by the board, and of course, forced uh, some strong opinions on the board. So I would say that if you are in the situation where you currently have two family members on your board, I would be very cautious about that and protect that and maybe even uh, align with your board chair to ensure that those individuals, those family members don't gang up together and form a coalition. But if you have got the opportunity and you are looking at recruiting some individuals and people want to come on um, as a husband and wife or wish to participate as a husband and wife, um, that in itself is not bad. I look for opportunities to serve with my wife all the time. But when it becomes problematic for decision making, um, I am just not certain if a husband and wife or family members should serve on boards together. So Amber, I hope that helped you and uh, made a difference in your decision making about having family members on boards. If you aren't currently a subscriber, please, we would love to have you as a subscriber. Uh, just click the red button down below that says subscribe. Uh, we'd love to answer any questions you have. You can submit those on Twitter at DebFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. You can reach out to uh, me personally at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. You can watch me on Instagram at DevEffectivenessStrategies. And you can also watch on Instagram my Monday three tips for the week. Wednesday video fundraising in video and also Thursday morning coffee tips with Jim Dempsey. So if you aren't already following us, please do so. And uh, also you can follow us in our group on Facebook, Development Effectiveness Strategies. Submit questions to us and we'll respond to those as quickly as possible. So as I always say, until next week, we are here to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.